Coca-Cola, Kleenex, AOL's You've, You've Got, Got mail. mail. They're synonymous with soda, tissues, and email. And to be honest, you can say the same thing about the Toyota Prius because as far as environmentalists are concerned, it's the Kleenex of hybrid cars, baby. Yes, we are actually doing this. Your computer and your eyes and ears are not broken. So slip on some Birkenstocks and grab a bowl of your best granola because this is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Toyota Prius. give a big thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this episode. In the oceanic depths of online content, there's an entire school of catfish working to diminish your online experience. Now, you can swim under the radar with Surfshark VPN. You can stop websites from tracking your economic status and targeting you with higher prices, but also protects your identity, alerting you anytime your email addresses or passwords are compromised. What's even better is that Surfshark VPN limits targeted advertising. I know I'm sick of having a conversation about something and then seeing it pop up in my ads. It's freaking creepy dude not anymore though Surfshark's got my back click the link in the description below and use code donut media it not only gives you a whopping 85 percent off the regular price but also three months of free service totally for freaking free Surfshark offers a 30-day money back guarantee so there's no risk to try it out for yourself support the companies that support donut and protect yourself it's wild out there right now now, before we dive into Toyota, I think it's important to point out that hybrid powered cars have been around for a really long time. In 1899, Ferdinand Porsche built the first commercial gas electric hybrid known as the Mixta. It sold pretty well, but when Henry Ford sold the Model T for a fraction of the price, hybrids basically disappeared until the 1970s. That's right. I'm talking about everybody's favorite crisis, the 1973 oil crisis. Oil crisis. You guys like oil crisis merch? Go ahead and hit that like button and let me know. With skyrocketing oil prices, manufacturers spent billions of dollars over the next two decades to eliminate the auto industry's dependence on gas and oil. But sadly, no one could figure out a way to mass produce a hybrid car with global appeal. And that is when Toyota stepped in. Chapter one, Toyota's future car. In the summer of 1993, two years before Post Malone was born, AG Toyota challenged Toyota to develop a revolutionary vehicle for the upcoming 21st century. He wanted something compact but spacious with a long wheelbase and a fuel efficiency at least 1.5 times greater than the next best car in its class. Led by Takeshi Uchiyamada, the Toyota team began working on their vehicle of the future, codenamed the G21. Sounds like a Terminator. Sick. To meet the chairman's request for fuel efficiency, the team developed an all new hybrid drivetrain called the Toyota Hybrid System, AKA the THS, AKA time for a tech talk. The THS featured a power split device connecting two electric motors to a small main gas powered engine. The drive motor would boost engine output while acting as a generator during deceleration to charge the batteries. The second motor would use the drive power of the small engine to generate electricity as well as control the transmission. The engine output would be divided between driving the vehicle and charging the battery and the continuously variable transmission would generate engine speed. All while an inverter converted the current between the direct current batteries and the alternating current motors. It was a great hybrid system on paper. Getting it to work in real life, well, <laughs> brother, that's a whole nother story. Toyota planned to unveil a concept of the G21 at the 1995 Toyota Motor Show, but they had a problem. They didn't have a functioning THS to present. So instead, Toyota unveiled the concept's shell. Under the hood, attendees would find another hybrid system as a placeholder. This one was called the Energy Management System, or EMS. Even though this engine 
wouldn't go on to represent the final Prius, it did represent the debut of the Prius nameplate. Now the word Prius itself is Latin for first. A lot of you guys comment that in the comments. And that couldn't be more fitting. Toyota wanted to beat the other manufacturers to the hybrid punch, especially their main rivals over at Honda. Freaking Honda. Following the Toyota Motor Show, the G21 team set out to make the Prius a reality. They joined forces with Matsush Matsushita Battery Matsushita Battery Industrial Company LTD to develop the batteries and got to work on a computer system small enough to fit inside of a little car, which apparently proved to be very difficult. Now I know that sounds ridiculous nowadays. Our phones are computers and so are our watches, but this is the 90s, okay? This was the year after Post Malone was born. Computers were bulky and beige. You kids wouldn't even understand what it's like to have one computer at your house and you gotta take freaking turns. We got these big old things we used to call floppy disks. And you put it in there and it held like eight Word documents. Chapter two, trial and a lot of error. By 1996, the G21 team evolved into the Prius team. And let's just say they were freaking out. Toyota had publicly announced that the production version of the Prius would debut in 1997. And behind the scenes, they had already gone into pre-production mode to mass produce the car for 1998. That's great news. Oh, thank gosh. So why was the Prius team freaking out? Cause their prototype could only drive 500 meters. That's why? That's less than a half of a mile. That's the exact opposite of the whole point of this freaking car. After days of testing, they got the basic programming under control, but then came the batteries. The nickel hydride batteries they used ended up being half as powerful and twice the size of what they anticipated. On top of that, the 240 cells that made up the batteries didn't function properly when drained and recharged so quickly. And believe it or not, this wasn't even the worst of their problems. Yeah, the Prius prototypes were exploding from massive electrical fires. And I gotta say, that's not really a strong selling point. Remember the Fiero? I'm no mathematician, but 20% of your cars catching on fire is way too many of your cars catching on fire. So the engineers got to work on a more aggressive cooling system. The irony was that while they successfully stopped the car from exploding, <laughs> good job. This new system put so much strain on the batteries that the Prius's fuel economy ended up being worse than a Corolla. Which is not the freaking point. That's again the whole point of the car was to get good gas mileage. But despite all the issues, the Prius team came through and Toyota was able to debut the car on October 14th, 1997. Two months later, the UN's Climate Control Convention in Kyoto used the Prius as the mode of transportation for diplomats and attendees. Environmentalists and auto industry folk appreciated the then 48 combined MPGs, but internally, Toyota wasn't sure how the general public would feel about a hybrid. Chapter three. The hype of the hybrid, yeah! Toyota made history with the launch of the first ever mass produced hybrid. And in this untested market, they set a modest sales goal of a thousand units per month. That's not a ton. I say modest because in its first month, they received 3,500 orders. I haven't heard of a success like that since the Buff Horses t-shirt. You guys made this shirt happen on this show. Now you can show everybody that you don't even like weak horses. You like them big old buff boy horses. Okay, back to the show. So they got 3,500 orders in the first month. And following that, the Prius was named Japan's car of the year. Toyota had a winner on its hands and quickly set its sights on complete global domination. High off of their success in Japan, the Prius arrived stateside in 2000 and it sold just okay. Referred to as the NHW 11, this global Prius sold 52,000 units over the course of three and a half years in America. These subpar numbers were maybe affected by Toyota's unproven technology, low gas prices, and the Prius's road noise caused by the lack of insulation in the thin glass. 
this thing didn't even have a freaking CD player. And people in the 90s freaking loved CDs. Ask Jeremiah, host of Bumper to Bumper. Let's see what we got going on in my collection here. How about 50 Cent? Mariah Carey Music Box. Dang, man, the hits just keep coming. And maybe, just maybe, the Prius wasn't a big hit because the Honda Insight had already quenched consumers' thirst for a hybrid one full year before the Prius even got here. Americans didn't see the Prius as a revolutionary car that Toyota had hoped for until 2004. <laughs> This completely redesigned Prius changed the auto industry forever. Toyota now gave the battery a 150,000 mile 10 year warranty to alleviate any concern over battery life. They upgraded the THS system, rebranding it now as the hybrid synergy drive, which sounds way freaking cooler. Sounds like something that breaks on the freaking Starship Enterprise. I gotta go down there and fix the synergy drive, Captain. It's like, okay, but then when you get back, we're kissing. What, dude? <laughs> Nothing. This new system bumped up the Prius's MPGs, now hitting 60 city and 51 highway. Plus, the 04 model ditched the boring sedan style in favor of a hatchback. Toyota was stoked and set a very ambitious sales goal of 5,000 units per month. And guess what? It didn't sell very well. Wrong! Toyota doubled their freaking sales goal. Well, at least I tried. Glad to see you're healing nicely. Second gen Priuses started flying off the lot, especially in traffic heady cities like Los Angeles and San Francisco. California's high gas prices and absolutely unbearable commutes turned the Prius into Hollywood's next big star. Most car companies have to pay celebrities to promote their brand. Ask me how I know. But Toyota got the best of the best for free. I'm talking Thomas Hanks, Jennifer from the block Aniston, the Goop Paltrow, and a certain Mr. Bradford Pitt. These A-listers validated the cool factor of the Prius. Yeah, I said cool factor because as much as you wanna hate on this revolutionary car, you can't hate Toyota for selling a basic quality hybrid for $21,000. Toyota not only doubled their Prius sales in 2004, they also doubled their numbers in 2005 and increased those numbers by 80% in 2007 to a massive 181,000 units sold. So in 2009 rolled around, everyone expected great things and Toyota dropped their all new Prius right into the great American recession. We're down over 16%, 18%, 21%, 43%. Now, while other manufacturers were struggling to sell cars, the Prius's numbers stayed pretty strong. This third gen Prius kept consumer interest with its added user selected drive modes, a low speed electric mode for sneaky silent driving, eco mode for long road trips, and an all new power mode for when you want to unleash all 98 of those beautiful lightning hybrid horses. And if you had an extra $10,000 lying around during the recession, you could load up your new Prius with a solar PV roof panels to cool the cabin, or you could add on intelligent parking and lane keep assist. This is future stuff back then. Prius sales didn't really spike until 2012 when Toyota unveiled an all new Prius family. These new additions included a plug-in hybrid featuring a more advanced lithium ion battery, which enabled emissions free driving for a range of 13 miles. You want to learn more about these batteries and if they are actually worse for the environment than just gas stuff, check out this episode of Wheelhouse. Say plug-in ain't your thing and you need a compact. With just a small loss of power and mileage, the new Prius C was a great entry level Prius, which made city parking a whole lot easier. Christina freaking has one. We put it on cool wheels. She's got some freaking OZs and track tires on her Prius. But let's say the C and the plug in just aren't big enough for you. Well, Toyota thought of that too. The Prius V came as a wagon. It was by far the largest Prius in the family, just like Colby. This whole new lineup sold fine and kept the Prius name relevant. But then in 2015, Toyota was faced with their biggest challenge yet. Other hybrids. Chapter four, the future 
of Toyota's future car. While Toyota was knowingly cannibalizing Prius sales with the introduction of the hybrid Camry and hybrid Highlander, other manufacturers were popping up and taking big old bites out of the Prius market pie. So to fight back, Toyota released the fourth gen Prius built on the Toyota's new global architecture platform. And let me tell you, it wasn't really a looker. They look like a bad guy from Star Trek. Captain, look out, there's a freaking enemy ship on the starboard bow. Let him get close, and then I'll kiss him. What? <laughs> Nothing. I kind of like it, but you know, I like weird stuff. With its 2015 release, Prius sales finally began to decline and Toyota had to make some changes. The Prius V was sent to the farm and the Prius C was discontinued in favor of the slightly larger 2020 Corolla Hybrid. Sadly, the Prius is currently suffering for being a trailblazer. Some people prefer Mountain Dew over Coca-Cola, Generic over Kleenex, Gmail over AOL. The Prius couldn't fend off the inevitable oversaturation in the market that they basically created. It's responsible for selling 12 million Toyota hybrids. It's revolutionized the automobile industry and convinced consumers to rethink gas dependency. Yeah, there was a 2018 facelift, but the Prius is old at this point. Its fans are old and now there are younger, arguably better hybrids and EVs out there stealing all the spotlight. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Up to Speed and everything else on Donut Media. If this is your first video, welcome, welcome. Good to have you. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Follow Donut at Donut Media and follow me across social at James Pumphrey. Um, get yourself a shirt. Check out, check out this episode of Wheelhouse. I love you.